Bears. I'm Steve. I'm Baby Trevor. And today we're going to be continuing our series on raw feeding of animals, particularly focusing on dogs. And we've got some announcements and some things to talk about, so uh, stay with us. family 
talking about and worrying about a financial collapse. You know, a the end of the world as we know it scenario. We talk about MAGs, mutual assistant groups. We talk about having your tribe, your community, your team. Well, guess what? This is an extended team. And when one of us is going through a bad time, we're all going through a bad time. So reach out. You know, sometimes all I can do is listen at 1 o'clock in the morning and I've got to be up by 4, 4.30 to be at work. And I'll do it. I don't care. You have people in your lives that care about you. And trust me, they'll do it too. So literally, when I say stick with us and stay with us, stick with us, stay with us. We're going to make it. We're a mag. We're a team. We're a family. Love you guys. So, I'm going to turn it over to you. Edumacate me. Fantastic. Well, today we're going to talk about phase one of transitioning your animals. And when I say animals, I'm talking dogs and cats as well. Um, cats have a little bit of a, a different nutritional requirement, talking about taurine uh, for their dietary requirements. Taurine is found in the heart. Um, with us getting started, it's kind of the same thing with cats as it is with dogs, just a little tweaking, and I'm not really a cat person, it's not that I hate them, but I don't have any. <laughs> so, I wouldn't mind a naked cat, though. Okay. <laughs> One of those Egyptian sphinxy thingies? Yes, gotcha. perfectly with little short legs. Anyway, so you can't jump on the counter. I do have a naked rat, though, so that would be a nice little picture. <laughs> of course, Tessa Until thinks that... Until the cat eats the rat. <laughs> no! Well, Tessa wants to eat her. She thinks that she's a piece of chicken. Poor raisin. She's all makers. Anyway, <clears throat> phase one, um, I'm going to talk about how to feed and what to feed. Um, at, in the transition, the, trans, the phase one should be anywhere between four and six weeks. You want to feed it until you have completely solid stools for at least a week before you transition to the next phase. Um, don't worry about your dog or cat not getting its nutritional requirements. It's the idea of prey model raw is feeding over time, what they need over time. Um, it takes about a week for me to give them all their nutritional requirements. So I have organ days, I have red meat days, I have chicken days. Um, it just depends. And it's it's not, you know, a cut and dry kind of thing. It, you can play with it. Um, Right now, I'm going to talk about what to feed and how to feed. I've got, well, I just processed 10 pounds and fed some. So, um, I like to go for the chicken leg quarters. Get these 10 pound bags of chicken. Um, it doesn't matter. I, the chicken leg quarter is what you want to feed to start, not just chicken breast or anything. They need that bone, they need everything that's in there. What you want to do to start is remove all the skin. Skin is fat, obviously, and that can cause issues with loose stools until they get used to it. So the idea of transitioning is getting your dogs and cats used to um, a raw diet. So it's very slow. It's almost like when you're switching kibble, you know, you're, you slowly increase the new kibble. We're not feeding kibble. So cats, it would be chicken wings because it's smaller. It's got the high bone. You want to remove as much of the skin as possible from those chicken wings. Um, I'm not 100% on how to feed cats raw, but it's very similar. I just know a little bit, so don't take my word for it. And as always, a little disclaimer, contact your vet and ask your vet. Don't take my advice, but take it wisely. <laughs> Everything said on this channel is for entertainment purposes only, and the parking and products cannot be held liable for anything that goes on with your animals. <laughs> anyway, so what I would do. Oh, see, Boaz, he knows. 
Tessa was over here. Oh, she's eyeing me from the couch. Look at the one eye. She's one eye around the... I wish you guys could see this. <laughs> Literally, the commando has crawled up on the couch. The pillow is blocking. She's I've got, got one eye. <laughs> she's got the scope on the target. <laughs> oh, oh, she, oh and she knows we're discussing her. Anyway, here's your chicken wing quarter. Now, when you transition completely into raw feeding, um, a lot of times I'll just hand this. He thinks that he hasn't eaten today, but he's already had three of these. Yeah, and he probably eat 20 more. Anyway, um, what I do a lot of times is I'll cut off the pelvis part, that's this bony part right here, and just remove the thigh and the leg from that spot and save them in the bag. Because when I do feed the organ meats, they do need the bone to help with the digestion. And it's like fiber, like I said in the last video. Bone is like fiber to dogs. Um, so with feeding something more rich that can cause diarrhea, you want to add it with bone. And I'll get bone meal and add that into, um, to mix it in with the liver and whatever organ I'm feeding. But for the extra weight, because with feeding organ, you're not just going to throw a huge liver at them. It's, it, there's a, a, a percentage of everything. I'll discuss that here later. But I'll say that um, with the transitioning, you're not going to have to worry about that. But you do want to peel off the skin, get rid of the skin. And uh, um, if there's a little bit left, it's not going to kill them. But you don't have to be precise. For Tessa, I would probably cut this part off. She's a 40-pound standard poodle and just give her a thigh and a leg. Um, it wouldn't hurt to overfeed them. Oh, that was smart. Or <laughs> underfeed them. Um, keep an eye on their body condition, as always. Um, Boaz, uh, 100 pound, 25 to 100 pound. He didn't catch the piece of chicken, and it went in my bucket. Anyway, um, I would pro he eats three of these. So even transitioning, I'd give him three of these. And you can feed them twice a day. I feed my dogs once a day. But just know that once you do start into this, they get what's called hunger pukes. And if you feed the same time every single day, first of all, I don't like to feed them in the mornings anymore because then they wake me up and demand for me to feed them, dancing all over my head and whatnot. Um, so I feed different times a day. That's also good because if they're used to eating the same time every day, he thinks he's going to get this, you're not going to start whining either. Um, the same time every day, they'll get the hunger pukes, and it's just vile, and it's because they're hungry, and it's not that they're sick, not dying, they're not, you know, getting ill from raw feeding, they're just hungry, and <laughs> so they'll get the hunger pukes. Um, anyway, so, if you have a 40-pound dog, one of these would work. If you have a 20-pound dog, give them a leg, next day give them a thigh. And, you know, it doesn't have to be precise. Just kind of judge your, your dog's size. Um, Boaz being 95, he'll get three of these. And that might be a little much, but he is a very active dog. We do run a lot, 5Ks and 10Ks. And so he does require more. Um, what I do to prepare once you are, I just, I'm out of chicken in my deep freezer. Yeah, me, out of chicken. So I had to get more. This is a day's worth. I'll get, that one's kind of small, so that probably be Tessa's. Um, he gets three, and Tessa gets one. Oh, that's a small one. That would be Tessa's, so I'll put hers on top. And that would be a day, a day's worth for both my dogs. And what I'll do is I'll bag these up and just stick them in their deep freezer and refall them for another time, like when I'm feeding. I'll do every... Whenever I pull food out, I pull out probably one day of organ meat, red meat, and two chickens. And I'll feed chicken every other day just because Mr. Big here. And it's just, and I, you know, you just play with it. I wouldn't do more than every other day because that's kind of a lot. I mean, they need probably, I would say, half of the 80% of meat that you're feeding them should be from red meat. Um, we eventually will get into uh, a variety. They need to have three to four proteins over time every day. So I'll get pork, I'll get 
you know, deer, uh, whatever I can source, if I can get a hold of a rabbit, if I can get a hold of a duck, if I can, you know, anything. I would never pick up roadkill and butcher it in my yard. My neighbors really love that. <laughs> Tessa's favorite food is squirrel. Isn't it? He likes squirrel. And that's probably why she wants to eat my rat. Anyway. Tree rat. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, feeding them to start. We're talking four to six weeks of just chicken leg quarters without skin. Um, after that, what our next video will transition to phase two, and it really is not hard. Phase two through the rest of the phases is pretty similar, just adding different proteins. Um, we'll get into that more in the next video, just because we want to make more videos for you. Um, and this is a lot of information. It is a lot of just. information, so we're cutting it down. Um, I took notes, so I'm going to read from my notes too. Um, for the how much, I really, with Boaz, don't weigh it out. Yes, I'm talking about you. I don't weigh it out for him. Um, I just watch his, I just eye it. Tessa, being 40 pounds and retired from service dog work and not running with me as much, being eight years old, I'm a little more strict on weights. I use a food scale and a bowl to weigh out her foods. Um, she eats right at one pound a day, so I'll get the 16 ounces uh, in there. And I'll let it go over a little bit, under a little bit. You know, it's not really cut and dry. Like, I have to be right at one pound. That's too stressful. Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, the ratio of what Premata Raw eats is 80% meat, 10% bone, and 10% organ. 5% of so half of the 10%, which is 5%, has to be liver. Um, liver has a lot of nutrients, a lot of vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin, uh, just every, a lot of things that they need. So 5% of what they're eating has got to be liver. Organ meats, we're talking uh, brain. Um, sweet breads is brain, too. But it, organ meats is secreting organs. So kidney, um, spleen. Liver. What else do I like to eat? Heart. Well, heart would be taurine. Heart would be so, okay. yeah, that wouldn't, it's not a secreting, that, but that is important. Heart is important. Yes, we said kidney. Those are the main ones I feed. Spleen, spleen gives Tessa what I call spleen farts. They are not pleasant. And we're going to have to fight over the brains because if you bring home something with a skin, I can use the brain for time. I know. Well, I can do it too. <laughs> But brain, when I mix it with the bone, makes me gag. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have a strong stomach, but I'm like, just the texture. <laughs> like, is it jello? Is it brain? I don't know. It's freaking nasty. Anyway, <laughs> so 80% has to be meat. We're shooting for 40% of what you're feeding to be a red meat. Uh, the rest can be fish. Oily fish is really good. If you can't get a hold of oily fish, my dogs don't really eat fish. I threw a fish head at Boaz and he dropped it and was like, what in the world? I don't know. Whatever. So, with that, if they won't eat that, um, you see, omega-3s with vitamin E is a good supplement to give them. Um, I, I try to stay away from supplements. He has had kind of flaky skin lately, so I've upped his eggs and been giving him a little bit of coconut oil. Um, yeah, you look guilty. <laughs> anyway, so 80, 10, 10. 10, the last 10, okay, middle 10 is bone. And like I said in the last video, it depends on your animal. So you watch your stools. If your stools are still a little soft, you want to increase the bone. You can get bone meal from the butcher. Just ask them for the bone meal. Just get bone dust from cutting bone and meat and such like that. They, they'll give it to you. Um, I get some from Big Dance Trucking. It's one of my sources. I love them. I don't like sharing that because sometimes they run out of things because there's so many people ordering from them. So that's my little secret right there. Big Dance Trucking. It is a pain, but when you're struggling to get variety, it's good to have them. Uh, they'll sell the uh, bone meal in big 10-pound 10 10 bags. And I'll just put a little 
dusting in there. But I get a few things from them. Now, are they a local source? or They are they? not. So I do have to ship. And in the summertime, I have to purchase, everybody does, a big insulated box that they ship it all to. And it still comes frozen. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I want it thawed when it gets here so I can process it. I don't like to throw it in my deep freezer and not have it process my OCD. I just want it done so I can it's sitting on me. Um, yeah, so Big Dance Trucking. They don't know that I'm promoting them, but there you go. Anyway, so the amounts to feed, take your dog's weight and multiply it by 2 to 3%. So with Boaz being 100 pounds, he should be feeding, being fed between 2 and 3 pounds a day. I would personally, with 100 pound dogs, start with 2 and a half pounds. And it doesn't have to be right high. It can be 2 pounds one day, 3 pounds the next day. It really doesn't matter. They don't care. They just want to eat. Um, with that being said, too, um, I, I said the three to four proteins is what we're going to go for later. Um, wild and game animals, like deer, you want to freeze for a month in the freezer, um, in the deep freezer, to kill off any um, organisms or parasites in, in the meats itself. Is that prior to processing or after processing? Oh, I do it after processing. As long as it's fed, it's frozen, you know, but I would rather process it rather than have to pull it out flat and then processing it. So I would process the deer and I just mark the date that it's available to be eaten. So a month from the day I processed it, stuck it in the freezer. And then that way when I'm going to pull stuff out to prepare their food for the month, I can look at the date and see, okay, it's not time to use that yet. I'll have to do that the next time. And then that way it's been in there long enough to cut down and eliminate intestinal parasites because it does, parasites often settle into the meats, um, not just the intestines. So you, you do have to be careful of that. And that also being said, you don't want to feed carnivores. Like wild boar is a no-no. You can feed pork, but it, you know, it depends on your dog. It doesn't really eat pork much. And yeah, so they're not kosher. Okay. We can make them, but that's not fair. It's like making your animals vegan. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry. Well, that just means that I won't be eating the dog food. <laughs> Don't eat the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I can't eat the dogs. Guess what, Bo? As you're safe. But Bark's we safe were discussing this discussion. earlier when I raised bulldogs. It was like, if there's never a problem, we're eating the dogs. Look at that thigh. That's some good eating. <laughs> I love my bulldogs. But I would eat them to save my family. <laughs> anyway, um, so wild animals. Uh, taurine is in the heart. Cats will get more taurine because they just nutritionally require that. The oily fish I did. Um, eggs for dogs. We'll feed them eventually two times a week. I would not, if you have chickens, which most of you probably do, go ahead and feed them the egg. The shell, everything, just give it to them. They'll either eat the shell or they want to eat the shell. Now, with store-bought, I don't know if you've ever smelled one, but you can smell the bleach on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hate store eggs. <laughs> anyway, so I would not give them the shell of the store-bought eggs just because there is bleach on them. Uh, what I do is I'll crack it in a bowl and he just licks it on them. But, um, so two times a week you want to give them egg. With egg, you will want to give some more bone. So... Preferably in a bone day because it's rich. You know, we'll t discuss that all later. Um, cats, it's like once every other week. Of course, they probably wouldn't eat the bone or the shell at all. Well, um, also, if you're dealing with cats, guys, I hope none of you uh, declaw your cats. Let them outside. They will come home, and they might bring you presents because you are a bad hunter. And then stick it in the freezer for a month and feed it to them <laughs> later. That or they'll eat it themselves and they'll get the organs and these things that they think they need, their bodies are telling them they need by their own version of raw feeding. Exactly. Well, Tessa, I have a funny story. Um, I went to take out the dumpster, or the trash to the dumpster, this was several years ago, walked around the side of the house and I see feathers everywhere and I'm like, something definitely died here. And I look around the corner and she's peeking around the corner and as soon as I see her, <laughs> she does a little sulk, so apparently she grabbed a bird out of the air and had a snack. Yeah. Poodles uh, uh. are bird dogs. <laughs> I'm shocked she caught one, but yeah, that's probably why they freak out when there's squirrels and birds in the backyard. 
They're like, snack time. Yep. <laughs> but uh, I don't remember anything else I was going to discuss this time around. Okay. Well, then. Uh, I do have to prep all of this chicken. Maybe you can help me? I'll help you. I'm willing to learn. So until next time, be safe, be cautious, keep your head on a swivel, stay frosty, and uh, get another deep freeze because you're probably going to need it for this. All right, guys. Thanks for watching Prepping in Progress. We love you. We care about you. Rick, I believe, is prepping a video that um, should go up sometime soon. Um, looking forward to seeing what he's got for us. And he and I need to get together and uh, film a new intro for the channel. We'll do it soon. Um, so we love you. Take care. See you soon.